what goes up must uh, eventually come down. Or is it? In uh, 1865, uh, Jules Verne proposed in his book De la Terre à la Lune, From the Earth to the Moon, that if we would shoot a projectile from a cannon with uh, sufficient initial speed, it would actually go all the way to the moon and never fall down. Uh, in chapter 3 of the book, he even gives us the speed. According to the book, we are needing a speed of uh, 12,000 yards per second. This is uh, in uh, metric unit about 1.1 times 10 to the 4. meters per second. Now the question I uh, want to be solving in this uh, video is, is this number actually accurate? Would an object, if I shoot it upwards with 1.1 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, as she will predict, not come back down, but actually go all the way to the moon or beyond? What I want to calculate is what would be the speed of an object needed to leave the Earth and not be pulled back by gravity. So I'm going to do this by looking at conservation of energy. So we have energy final is energy initial plus work done by any external forces. So in my case, uh, once I'm very, very far up at the highest point of my trajectory, I will have potentially potential energy and kinetic energy. And uh, initially, when I start from the surface of the planet, I have my potential energy initial plus my kinetic energy initial plus the work done by any unbalanced force. In this case, uh, if I'm at my highest point, uh, I assume if I just make it to my highest point, I will actually come to a stop. So at the highest point, I will have uh, no kinetic energy, while at the initial point, I have some potential energy from gravity and I have some kinetic energy from gravity. Now we have one problem for the potential energy of gravity, we cannot use mgh. Why? Because g, the further I go away from the planet, uh, the lower g will be. So definitely the change in potential energy is not mgh. But I can use the old trick that the change in potential energy is minus the work done by gravity. So in case of, so instead of considering uh, the potential energies, I'm going to be considering uh, the work done by gravity. And gravity being the only force that actually acts on my object. If I do my free body diagram here of my uh, projectile that I'm going to be shooting up, I'm going to have gravity pulling back down to the earth and we are traveling in upward direction. Let's call this dx. So if I simplify this equation, what I'm going to get is that the kinetic energy initial, so the one half mv initial square is equal to minus the work done by gravity. So how do we calculate the work done by gravity? It's the force times the displacement. In the case that the force is changing, we will have to do the integration. So fg dot dx. Now I'm well aware that most of you have not taken uh, calculus 2 yet, so you don't know what the what I'm actually doing here with the integration, but uh, once you did take calculus 2, you can come back here 
and look if you now understand what I'm doing. For the moment, just follow uh, what I'm doing and we're going to see uh, what the number is that I come up with. Also, I hope this gives you a good idea why it is important to take Calculus 2 and learn about integration. This must be equal to minus I'm going to be integrating from where I start, from the surface of the planet, so R initial, and I want to go to infinity. And the force of gravity, here we're using Newton's universal law of gravity, so we have capital gravitational constant times mass of the projectile times mass of the planet Earth over the distance squared. And now the x, and if I look at my free body diagram, uh, the x and fg is pointing in opposite directions, so I have a cosine of 180. So I'm going to put a minus here. So the minus actually removes the minus, so I can simplify as uh, g is a constant, mass is a constant, mass integral from initial position to infinity from x to the power of minus 2 dx. So what does this give me? This gives me g times mass times mass times x to the power of minus 1 over minus 1 plus integration constant evaluated from R initial to infinity, which gives me GMM 1 over infinity minus 1 over infinity plus 1 over R initial. Now let me rewrite this. So we had one half and v squared is equal to capital G mass of the projectile mass of the planet over R. So the mass of the projectile interestingly falls out and what I get is v is equal to square root of 2 times capital G times the mass of the planet I'm leaving from times the distance from the center of that planet that I'm leaving for. Now something that's interesting to see here is that if I would be leaving from a planet with less mass I would need less initial uh, velocity to do so. So, to go on an interstellar mission, instead of leaving from the surface of the Earth, it could be actually interesting to leave from the surface of the Moon or eventually from the surface of the Mars. Even better than leaving from the surface, if we're leaving from a bigger distance from the center of the object, for example from the orbit, from a space station, uh, we would also need much less velocity. So, to go to Mars, most likely we will not leave with a rocket directly from Earth, we will first transport everything into the Earth orbit and then leave from the orbit around the Earth or even better from the orbit around the Moon to go uh, to Mars and to go on an interstellar mission if we could make a pit stop at the Mars first transport everything to the orbit of Mars and then for our interstellar mission to leave from the orbit of Mars we would need much less energy uh, to do so. And now back to uh, Schilbert's numbers of 12,000 yards per second or 1.1 times 10 to minus 4 meters sec seconds. Well, what happens if now I plug in uh, my numbers? G as 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 Newton square meters per kilogram square, the mass of the Earth as 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and uh, the radius of the Earth, assuming we are leaving just from sea level, uh, then we would have a radius of 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now, what I will get is the following. 
1.1 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. So 1.1 times 10 to the 4 meters per second is the speed needed. So if you shoot the projectile at this speed at the surface of the Earth, it will never come back down. It will actually go to infinity. That's why we call this velocity the escape velocity. Now, back to the number of Schilwern. Look at this. It is absolutely exact. So in 1865, a French author correctly predicts the escape velocity uh, from Earth. Just think about it, 1865, there was no space program yet. There were no rockets yet. So he was really ahead of his time. Actually, the speed that he gave to shoot the gun to leave the Earth is, is enough to go to infinity. He only wants to go to the Moon. So to go to the Moon, you actually need less than that. Why? Because somewhere between Earth and Moon, so if you have Earth here, and you have the moon here. Somewhere in between, the gravity of the moon will actually be equal than the gravity of the Earth. So you don't even need to shoot the projectile to infinity. All you need to shoot it is to that point where the gravity of the moon is equal to the gravity of the Earth, and then will fall down onto the Moon automatically. So uh, the speed that Schoen was giving, uh, that is required to leave Earth, uh, is sufficient to not just go to the Moon, it would have been sufficient to go all the way to infinity.